we're thrilled to share the next hour with you because, as I mentioned, there is a ton of valuable content coming your way regarding email lists, how to make the most of it, how to make money from it. If email marketing were the Atlantic Ocean, we are only able to give you a teaspoon today. Email marketing is a vast arena. There is so much involved, so much complexity, so much detail, so much that we could cover. But unfortunately, we only have an hour. And so we're going to give you a teaspoon but it's a really darn valuable teaspoon. But I want you to know up front, this is not a comprehensive course on email marketing and everything there is to know. This is top shelf value driven, KPI focused value for you. And what we're going to cover today is a few salient things. We want you to get to know your email list better. We're going to talk about the value of different lists. We're going to discuss segmentation, custom fields, tags. Now, if these... If these descriptors are, are new to you, don't worry. We're going to assume that you know little to nothing about email marketing. We'll be able to show you exactly what you need to know. If you are coming from a position of more sophistication, you know a lot about email marketing, you'll still be able to derive a lot of value because we're going to go e even deep into some examples of people who have used email marketing techniques like the ones that we're going to explain and have extracted immense value from them. And happy holidays to one and all. We're in the holiday season. So in the nick of time, we're going to give you some tips that'll help you to, hey, celebrate the holidays even better with some uh, just in the nick of time tips. Now, there's two primary things that we're going to cover in here. Section one, thanks to IDIC. Section two, I'll be providing a little bit of stuff. But first of all, we're going to talk about the audience. And I cannot emphasize enough the importance of getting to know your audience. The real value of that will be explained later on. Edic is going to show you some tips and tricks for maximizing that. And in the second part, after Edic goes through his section, I'm going to talk about ka-ching, ka-ching. When we hear the cash register, make that dinging noise and you get more revenue in your company coffers. So I'm going to toss it over to Edic now. Take it away, Edic. Cool. Thanks, Daniel. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad that you've joined us today. So yeah, exactly. I, I wanted to start with actually, you know, talking talking with you about the audience and actually about the importance of actually knowing your audience. So, um, you know, because very often we, we we talk about email list, contact list, database, but we we actually mean that you know this is the place where actually we 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 put all those like email addresses, right? Or just like whenever somebody subscribes, there's like a name and email address, and that's it. Um, but I, I've been lucky because you know I'm, I'm working together with our customers and I realized that those customers who are really successful and, and who run really effective email marketing campaigns, they actually know that it, you know this, this contact list, of course, you know this is like a marketing word we use, but actually they, they tend to think about it as audience, then prospects and customers. So actually, if, if we think about like a contact list, so this is, you know, the place where you can actually figure out, okay, so who are the people who, who, who represent your target audience, right? Who then, because very often these are like, you know, people who, I don't know, they, they maybe they, they saw your ad or they uh, visited your website. And they, they really like, you know, they found that your offer is interesting enough. So they, they, subscribed they left their you know name email address and they wanted to 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 know more at a certain point um and then we have prospects right so in this case like prospects are, are people who actually are engaged in in your marketing so you know if you create some content uh, you know if you inform about your brand uh, about what it is about your products right about the benefits of using your products so you can you can consider people who are highly engaged as your prospects i believe and then from like within this group you will have of course like a group of customers so people who at some point you know they they just they thought they realized that your product and your service is actually you know something that that uh meets their needs so of course you can you can dive deep and actually you can uh you know distinguish among different audiences for example you know in get response as a global company um i can i can give you an example of like you know for example i mean 
uh, depending on the country, right? So, so you, you can create like a different list and you have like a different audience. So for example, you have customers in Italy, right? Customers in the US, customers in Poland, customers in Russia. So actually you have like different target audiences, uh, like the main difference being language. So, you know, this is an example that, that you can, it's a good idea actually to treat people differently. Uh, if you realize that actually you want to operate globally, right? And you actually, you know, speak to different audiences and then of course, when we think about prospects, you also like, you know, you could like dive, dive deeper um, and figure out like, you know, okay, who are these people? What do they need? And by what do they need? I mean, like, you know, like what are their business needs? So what is their business need? Why, 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 you know, um, and what do they need to know in order to buy your product or be ready to buy, you know, what are your, what are their information needs? So here I would like just to, to tell you that, um, yeah, I've, I've seen, I've realized that the most successful cu customers I've worked with are actually, you know, those who ask them th th those questions. So uh, they constantly actually think about the audience, about prospects, about customers, and they, 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 they very often, they regularly come back to this question, okay, who they are, what are their business needs, what are their information needs, and then, as you can see, I was like struggling to draw this uh, line coming back from customers to audience, because as you can see, you can create this sort of like a feedback loop. And then when you realize who your customers are, you can, you can be more effective in, in, in reaching out to people, you know, who might not know about your brand yet, but they, 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 you know, have like high chance of becoming your customers. Right. So um this is let's say you know something I, I i wanted to tell you because i've i've realized that this is the let's say backbone of of success for many of the customers I, i've been working with and when it comes to get response and you know like like the technology that can help you with that so so you can you know you can use automation in order to uh use something called custom fields tags and then like, you know, segment your list properly. So you can have like multiple email lists and then within these lists, you can actually use custom fields, tags to actually, you know, collect valuable information about your customers and then you can segment them. So actually you have different segments and this is actually uh, the kind of list that allows you to personalize, you know, your content. So actually if, if you know who, who are the people on your list? If you can segment them properly, only then actually you can, you know, send relevant emails and relevant marketing communication uh, to, yeah, to like different groups on your list. So, yeah, enough talking. I just wanted to uh, do something more engaging, I hope, something, you know, interactive. So I wanted actually to, to show you right away using like, you know, the assets that we've prepared uh, previously in GetResponse. Uh, how it actually works. So let me share my screen with you. And now I'm typing in into the chat this link to a website. I've created this website yesterday and I wanted actually to, to use it during today's webinar because, you know, you can talk about things, but I think that you need to experience that. So actually here, let's just, you know, play with it together. So as you can see, there is a website and this website was actually created in order to just like explain the difference between a custom field and a tag. So I'm, I've, I've, um, there is a definition by, by our friends Justyna because like, you know, she was clever enough to actually figure out how to explain it in, in, in simple terms, but actually you, do, you do explain it with, with clarity. And I think that, you know, the, the difference is that custom field uh, is something that you can see here. So for example, in this web form on the website, we have three custom fields, name, email, and country. So custom fields, according to Justina, are pieces of information your contacts share with you. So this is the kind of, you know, information provided by the subscriber, by the, you know, visitor, um, but tags represent information you assign to your contacts yourself. So then you can actually create some, you know, automation workflow and assign as many tags as you wish in different contexts, you know, depending on the kind of information you would like to um, create. So here, okay, let me see 
I'm, I'm jumping into my get response account right now and I'm clicking the lists here. Okay, so now I can see that two people signed, uh, like, like filled out the form. Thank you so much, guys. This is, this is great because uh, now as, as you, um, we can see that my email list is growing uh, and I wanted to show you something before actually I jump into the uh, email list. Uh, I created also, apart from the website, I created automation flow, like a very, very simple flow. Um, okay, and it is as follows. So whenever somebody subscribes to my website, I assign a tag engaged webinar attendee. And thank you so much guys for subscribing because we have prepared something special for you know all the engaged uh, attendees today. So yeah, thanks a lot. And as you can see, I've used automation. It's you know very simple yet very effective because right now I know who were the attendees of the webinar and I know like you know who were most engaged people during the webinar. So this is so awesome because it just like you know happens automatically. And now I can just like you know work with data. So uh, I'm going back to the lists here. Okay, we've got four people. So thank you because you know I can see that people are uh, still signing up. Uh, okay, what happens if I click the list? Um, so here are the people who uh, subscribed. I'm clicking this uh, email address, um, and here we have something that we call a contact card within Get Response, and this is actually where all the valuable information is collected, right? So you. Let me just show you around a bit. So, of course, like, you know, you have the basic info, like uh, name and email address. Also, you have this uh, engagement score. So, you know, you, you, you can figure out, okay, who are my prospects maybe, or who are, you know, the audience, I don't know. But th there is so much more to that, because if, if you use autoresponders, you will have information about, you know, the, the autoresponder series. Um, you have, you can collect like phone number, company name, you know, the country, because as I mentioned before, if you operate globally, this is something you would be interested in. Uh, you have all the subscription details, right? And here you have custom fields because I've added this one to, to my uh, form uh, with country. So I, I know that Edek, who joined um, yesterday, I know that he's from Poland and then he's got this tag, engaged webinar attendee. So, for example, I could create a segment for all the, you know, engaged people during the webinar and I can send them something special or I can actually, you know, treat them as VIPs from now on. So um, this is cool. Um, also, you have very interesting feature here that you will see all the activity within the account. So let's say that this contact, you know, opened your email, clicked the link, visited a website. Um, you will see the history of engagement here. So, so this is actually what we meant that email list might be your, 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 your business, like biggest business asset. Because, you know, switching from like a generic contact list as a kind of, I don't know, container of names and email addresses into an email list that actually you know informs you about your target audience about your prospects about your customers it really makes a difference because then you can use content in order to actually you know uh, provide people with everything they need in order to make a decision about the purchase yeah, of your product or service so brilliant thanks so much for being okay let me just go back and let me see if anybody else all righty, so we have five people right now. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, we have 10 people actually on the list. Nice, thank you. So you can expect something special, but I guess that Daniel is gonna tell us more about it in a, in a moment. But uh, thank you so much, guys. This is, this is what I wanted to show you actually, that uh, this is what we meant by like, you know, solid email list that becomes your business asset. Uh, we meant that, you know, you can use Mm, like a website, you can use automation and then, you know, make sure that you collect valuable um, information about your audience. So then you can use it in order to personalize your communication. Cheers. Over to you, Daniel. Awesome. 
Thank you, Idik. So what Idik just shared may be a little like, whoa, what the heck was all that? He went into this system. He was looking at the software. So I can give you one piece of advice to figure out how do I do exactly what Idik did? Get into the software and try it out. Okay, that's really the best way to do it. What, what Idik just showed you is possible for anybody to do. If you know how to point and click a mouse, you can do exactly what he did. There are some complex things that GetResponse can do. And I'm going to show you some of those complex things, you know, using like those arrows that he was showing and the flows and stuff. But don't be scared by the complexity. An email list is actually a very simple thing, but there's so much that you can do with that. What I want to get into next has to do with making money. Okay, how do you drive revenue from that audience that it just showed you? So in the first place, I want you to be assured of this fact. And this is a fact that I didn't just draw out of thin air. It's a fact that's based on data. And GetResponse has been doing this for over 20 years. Your email list is the fastest and the most direct route to making massive amounts of revenue. There's a little picture of Warren Buffett to get kind of dollar signs in your, in your mind and think about all the money. But I also want to provide with that, the, that, that great capitalistic assertion, I, I want to just address the ethics of this for a moment. Okay, you did not join an ethics webinar. But that being said, I don't want you to feel bad about this. Because an email list is one of the most ethical marketing methods. Why? Because those people that are on your email list chose to be on your email list. They volunteered themselves to receive correspondence from you. Secondly, not only did they volunteer their name and their email address, which is a pretty significant thing to hand over in today's age, day and age, but they have also continued to remain part of your email list. They have not clicked the unsubscribe button yet. They have not clicked the spam button yet. So you can continue communicating with these people. And as you are continuing to communicate with these people who have opted in and chosen to be part of your email list, you are engaging with them. So these aren't simple faceless automatons sitting out there in the ether. These are actually humans, flesh and blood, who are reading the content, who are getting to know you, and you are getting to know them. As Idik just showed you, you have contact cards on everybody who's opting into that email. You can do some, you know, some ethical stalking and find out, okay, where are they? What's their language? What's their segment, et cetera? So this is an ethical method of generating revenue. These people want to hear from you, and they want to purchase your products or service. And if they don't, that's fine. That's their loss. That's their choice. So don't be afraid of the fact that this is, this is a legitimate and ethical method of making money. But I want to clear up a few things. Rules. What are the rules to making money from email marketing? Rule number one is know your audience. Rule number two is refer back to rule number one. Everything begins with the audience. So as many bells and whistles and cool things we're going to show you today, it's all about your audience, okay? Getting to know them, understanding them, finding out what they want, what they need, who they are, what their desires are, and really focusing on the audience as opposed to just shoving a product or service in their face. So those are the rules. And yes, this may sound a little bit like Fight Club, but we're trying to be really nice about it at the same time. So thanks for that comment, Rick. So how easy is it to make money from an email list? Now, I have been in this industry for about 12 years, and I've get the, I get these emails from talking heads. Jeff Bezos, thanks for participating in the webinar today. We appreciate your attending. I know we have a lot to share with you, Jeff. Um, but that being said, I've gotten these emails from people, and they are at, they're saying, I sent one email, and I got $162,000. Okay, sounds great, but that's largely fiction. Is it true that they sent one email and may have generated six figures? Yes. But the fact of the matter is that was a process. A million-dollar email, a six-figure email, a four-figure email, a two-figure email, it all starts with a process of other emails, right? You're curating your audience. You're not just saying, buy my product. 
you're sending them an email saying, hey, here's what's going on. Who are you? What is this? Can I give you something free? Is there something uh, that you're looking for? You send a lot of other zero <laughs> revenue generating emails to get to the big kahuna. Okay. And I posted a picture there of these friendly people in this children's book because you're actually doing that. You're forming friendly relationships with your audience. So again, it goes back to rule number one or rule number two, knowing and curating your audience is logically prior to making money. So let's get into brass tacks, right? What are the types of emails that generate revenue? And of course, I'm going to give that Broad disclaimer, it just depends. I know that's a big disappointment. I'll get into specifics, but yes, it does depend, okay? Because if you're Ikea and you want to sell sofas, then you're going to send a certain uh, certain type of email. But if you are Rick and maybe you're selling a consultation service for taxes or accounting, it's going to be a totally different type of email, okay? So every industry is different, and therefore the emails that you send are going to be different. Secondly, though, if your email has a call to action that has the potential to generate revenue. Okay, now the acronym in the marketing world is CTA, call to action. A call to action is very important because you're actually creating an email that is asking the customer, the prospect to do something. Click on the button, take them to a page, they purchase a product, they opt into a funnel, etc. So you want to make sure that any revenue gener generating email has that call to action. No call to action, nothing happens, right? Call to action, something happens, revenue happens. So again, just, just to, to recap this slide, it just depends. I'll show you examples, but you want to make sure you have a call to action. Okay. So first of all, the types of emails that generate revenue are special occasions. Special occasions is a broad catch-all category that can include the prospect's birthday. Happy birthday. We have a 50% off coupon for you. We have a free cupcake. Here, have a cupcake. Or it can be like holidays, events, right? National holidays. Again, we're coming up on Christmas, the season of Christmas. So you want to say, hey, happy holidays. By the way, we have a wonderful gift for you. And here it is. Also, product launches. You got a new product. You want to tell the world about it? Go ahead. Send an email. CTA. Free stuff. Best way to get people engaged, get them in the funnel, say, hey, we have a gift for you. Join this. We're going to segment those people off. And now we have great stuff to provide for them. Newsletters. If you have a cadence of newsletters that are going out, that's a great way to engage your audience and provide an opportunity for them to purchase a product or service. And then abandoned shopping cart. If you have an e-commerce store, I'm going to give you a quick insight as to how to maximize revenue from abandoned shopping carts. Okay. So let's go through the anatomy of a revenue generating email. If you want to screenshot this, great. But there's eight simple things, and I'm just going to walk through them because I know, I understand that this is a lot of information coming to you rapid fire. Subject line is important. Personalization also has a proven data-backed Response rate, conversion rate, open rate that's higher than any other types of uh, emails. So as long as you're personalizing it, saying, hey, hello, Damien, hello, Edik, hello, Daniel, hello, Mihao, you can make sure that that has a higher conversion rate than non-personalized email. An enticing preview text that gets people to say, even before they open the email, this is going to be an interesting email. Number four, conversational copy, right? Don't sound like a robot. Speak to the people as you'd be speaking to them face-to-face. Fifth is split testing, A-B testing. That is something that we provide. You're testing subject line number one and subject line number two. Pick the one that converts better and send that to the rest of your list. Segmented list is key. Edic went through this, and that is the one of the most powerful things that you can do. Finding the people within your list that are most likely to buy, that have a certain demographic feature. You want to make sure that you're segmenting lists to be able to generate as much revenue from that list as possible. Brief body copy as opposed to long body copy. Okay, we're all busy. We don't have time to read, you know, war and peace in our email. So you want to make sure that you're getting to the point, you're cutting to the chase, and you're providing a CTA as quickly as possible. So there's eight key points that I just want to throw out there to you and say, hey, this is the type of email that will generate more revenue as opposed to something that is lengthy, has a boring subject line, isn't segmented, doesn't have testing prior to it. Quickly now, I want to walk through a couple of case studies to give you just a taste of the potential that can happen when you're maximizing your email list. First of all, there's a company called Crispol, 
And they wanted to directly reach out to end customers, educate them, provide free resources. And so what they used with GetResponse were landing pages, an email marketing process, and then some marketing automation features. And what they did was they were able to create automation cycles, which you can do in GetResponse. They segmented their audience with seven categories, and then they created a sequence of 10 emails to send to this audience. Now, this, this next image may be disturbing to some users. It's very complicated, and it's in Polish. And I, I don't know about you, but I'm not really good at Polish. Irek is. He's fluent. It's his mother tongue. But that being said, what this is simply showing is the series of emails that Crispo sent to their audience. They were able to get information from their audience to find out, this is what we're looking for. This is what we need as we're considering putting a gate into our property or adding this certain feature to our house. And they were able to send them free guides. Now, those guides informed their users, this is valuable stuff. I want to engage further with Crispo. I want to actually access it and purchase a product, purchase a service from it. So what they used, again, were segmentation marketing automation, and a few sequences that sent those emails automatically to their customers and was able to generate massive amounts of revenue for the company. That's the power of segmentation and marketing automation features. Okay, going on to another case study. This is coming from Celsi. They're one of the biggest furniture and home deco retailers in Poland, and they wanted to encourage users to complete a purchase. Okay. A few minutes ago, I mentioned shopping cart abandonment. If you run an e-commerce shop, people are going to put stuff in their cart, and they're going to walk away and forget about their cart. Okay, You don't want that to happen. When they put something in their cart, they're just a couple clicks away from ka-ching, ka-ching, revenue, purchasing, product, etc. You want to make sure you win those customers back, and it's actually easy to do so. All it requires is a few emails. What Celsi did was they used, after 15 minutes, Post, post abandonment, they sent an automatic message to the users, okay? And they were able to gain a bunch of people who were like, oh, whoops, I put something in my shopping cart. Maybe I should complete that transaction. Boom, more conversions, simple email, simple rule, simple automation, simple segmentation, and boom, more revenue. Power of a shopping cart abandonment. What about the people who didn't make a purchase? Well, automatic segmentation, 24 hours after the abandonment, if they hadn't made a purchase still, Hey, by the way, you've got something in your cart. Do you want to complete that transaction? Automatic, sent the email, more people purchased. And if they don't finalize the purchase, that segmentation happens automatically. They get into a cycle of messages that's going to remind them to finish the purchase. Now, does this sound persistent or a little bit annoying? No, because these people, if they make a purchase, they forgot about it. They want to complete the purchase, and they do. Happy customer, happy you. The fact that we're sending subsequent emails is not a source of annoying, annoyance. It's a source of reminding them that, hey, you've got something in your cart. Go ahead and complete the purchase. Now, in the case of Celsi, the results were remarkable. Now, they didn't achieve this accidentally. They did it through intentional sequencing and intentional tagging and segmentation of customers and creating that fairly complex life cycle that I just showed you in the previous slide. But what it did was their conversion rate grew by 202%. That includes customers who reviewed with five-star reviews. The conversion rate also grew from by 239 because what they did to a series of customers was they provided them a discount code. Okay, so not only did I abandon my car and forgot about it and you're sending me a reminder, but you're also sending me a discount. So maybe it pays to be forgetful. I don't know. In this case, Celsi was able to maximize revenue using that sequence, and you can do the same. Okay, so this isn't something that's just for elite users who have a very uh, complex approach to marketing and have a lot of people on computers doing complicated things all day. This is something that any user can do using GetResponse and the processes and the systems and the, and the operations that we put in place. It's very easy to use. As complex as it may look and as confusing as all those arrows may be, it's actually very simple to piece this together. And if I'm being completely transparent, it's fun too. And I'm not a computer programmer. I don't have any development background. I'm just a marketer, right? So this is easy and fun to do. So that sums it up. I realize that there have been some questions coming through on the chat, and we 
definitely want to make time for that. So ask away. This is your chance to ask questions. Becky had a question saying, what's your suggestion on including link or actual episodes of a podcast? This gets into some, some specifics. Edic, you want to tackle that one? Realize I put you on the spot, Edic. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah, sure. I was uh, making sure that I, you know, that my mic is on, but it is, I guess. Perfect. Cool. Um, so, including a link or actual episodes of a podcast, right? So, I'm not really sure, actually, Becky, what is the context for the question, but I believe that if you run a podcast, for example, and you've got this, like, you know, content that is arranged into episodes, so I would actually, you know, suggest using a newsletter as a kind of way to promote it and actually, you know, send maybe something extra. So, you could actually use your um, you know, you could build your email list, you could build your audience and then, yeah, send individual episodes of your podcast in an email and maybe even like, you know, based on what I've said before, if you, for example, you know, figure out the segment of like, you know, people who are uh, most engaged or maybe, you know, if you run a patronite and, you know, if, if you have patrons, you could actually create a se segment of VIPs among, you know, your audience. So actually here you could send something extra, uh, like, you know, some interesting um, articles, uh, any kind of like, you know, content that is relevant to, to, to the episode of your podcast. So actually, you know, it might be, I think that it's always a good idea to diversify and actually, you know, run uh, a few channels. So, yeah, I, I consider podcasts as, as a brilliant type of content, but podcasts and uh, newsletters, they go well together. Awesome. Um, Dennis is asking, do you have this software in GetResponse? Yes, everything that you've seen today is within GetResponse's software. It's part of our ecosystem. We're not showing you anything that you can't do and get response. So everything that you see is using get response. Great question. Um, we have this question, what's the best tone of language to be used in email listing? I'm assuming we're looking at sort of what what's the best approach? Like how do we address the audience? So there, there's a couple ways that I'm gonna answer this question. First of all, you're going to want to use a tone or a voice that is most relevant to your audience. So, for example, if you're talking to developers, you're going to want to be very uh, feature-driven as opposed to benefit-driven. You're going to want to use language and jargon that resonates with them. Um, but at the same time, what you want to approach generally is a conversational approach, right? You don't want to be super reserved, super formal, et cetera. A conversational, like you would talk in everyday, everyday life, would be an ideal tone of language. Uh, to uh, to use. Um, a B testing, Audrey. Great question, Edic. How do you feel about tackling that question? Sure. Uh, thanks, Audrey. A B testing is crucial if we think about you know effective marketing. So uh, in Get Response, you can A B test a lot. I would say. So actually, it all let's say starts with your landing page. So you can A B test different variants of uh, your landing page, and then you can move on to A-B testing your email messages. So you can A-B test your uh, subject lines, pre-headers, you know, everything that is visible before opening the email. And then you can also A-B test different variants of uh, content. So actually, yeah, I mean, you can go heavy with A-B testing. It just like, it, it all depends on, on the resources, I would say. Because like the, the customers I've been working with, I mean, they, uh, it all depends on the resources, really. So if they do not have all the time and team may members in the world, uh, they would just, you know, focus on like some key areas of communication. But very often, I mean, uh, what is also very important is actually being able to join the dots from like, you know, email open or, or even like subscription to revenue. So. So you need to just figure out, you know, this kind of path that is, you know, that the most uh, profitable. And then I would suggest A-B testing this path. Good. Um, Damien has a question about uh, what's a good or average open rate for emails. And again, it's, it's um, 
we could we could share a lot of data on open rates and click through rates, et cetera. But what what Get Response does every year is we send out this massive survey. We we create we crunch the data, and we found that some of the best open rates are above eighty percent. Which you know, if you send your email to hundred people, eighty of those people are going to open it. Um, I'll go even a, a little bit deeper, and I'll mention too that uh, click through rates. Um, hover around 20 to 25 percent. Um, and again, this just, again, I don't want to be the guy that says it just depends, but it does just depend. It depends on your subject line, it depends on your industry, it depends on the size of your list, it depends on the quality of your list. You want to, you want to make sure you're cleaning your list too from time to time, scrubbing it of any emails that are, you know, bouncing back, that are dead emails that are no longer valid. But 80 um, percent is an ideal uh, range to shoot for. Now, if you're down in the 20s, don't be disappointed. That's just part of growing as an email marketer and understanding your audience and getting to know them better. And as you do get to know your audience better and start sending better emails and maybe implement some A-B testing, you'll watch that open rate improve. So great question, Damien. Thank you. Thanks. I, um, I just also wanted to add that, remember that this is the average open rate. So, you know, the average is, well, it represents, you know, like everybody like together. So <laughs> I, 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 I'm laughing because it reminds me of one time I, I had a, you know, pleasure to talk to a customer who was really disappointed. And they told me that, well, because you know that our open rates are down, our click through rates are down. And I said like, wow, what happened? So, so, you know, just tell me more. And then, you know, because open rates are 60% and, you know, our click through rates, they rarely go, uh, go above 30%. And I was like, mm, okay, <laughs> so you're still well above the average. So just, yeah, if I, I think that if you use, you know, automation and if you use all the, you know, technology that is available right now, so you can easily go uh, beyond the average. Cool. Um, Michelle has a question about ideas on aggregating data across all types of sends. I'll attempt to answer this based on what I think uh, the question is, and then you can uh, take a stab at it if you want. But for every email that you send, there are there's a detailed metric um, overview and get response. So you'll be able to look at all the analytics for any email that you send. Um, any thoughts on that, Idik? Maybe some uh, some texture to the answer there. Well, I you know it, it, there are like hmm, different approaches to that, uh, but I, I would for for example you know like focus on on basically different types of emails. So let's say that you run like your regular newsletter with content, but then you have also like you know promo emails uh, or some maybe more product or service oriented emails. So I would differentiate these two groups for sure and then i would just observe you know I, I i would focus on like a message and the audience i would try to you know tie the the message to the audience and the engagement so i would it's it's actually one of the ideas is if, if I were to, because this, this is a great, great question, but I've got this like, you know, ocean spoonful situation going on right now, because like uh, I could talk for, for hours here, but uh, I think that I would recommend category, like, like um, creating some categories for the kind of emails you send and then, you know, work from there. So first group your, 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 your messages perhaps by like like with, with a goal right what is the goal for 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 a certain message so if it's like a product promo uh then it's one group if this is like you know content um this is the second one so that would be my approach to actually at first just to group the the the, the emails by the goal and and you know by the by the contents good I'm um, seeing a question from Dennis, my brother in South Carolina, about where can you find these links? Anything that you need, anything that you're looking for, you can find within the GetResponse software. And uh, it kind of demoed that briefly. But once you get in there, and of course, you can, this is entirely free. Okay, we're not, we're not asking you to spend a lot of money today. We're asking you to spend absolutely nothing, unless, of course, you want advanced features and additional sophistication, but you can start using GetResponse free forever. So no, no strings attached. All those links are within the software itself. Um, I'm going to show this question um, from Mr. Damien. It says, it sounds like this could take a lot of time. Do I need to hire an email marketing specialist? Um, yes, I will say that it could take a lot of time. Um, that being said, the email software within GetResponse is very 
easy to use. It's intuitive. It's not extremely hard to learn. So within about 30 minutes, I would say you'll be able to know how to use the software in its basic form. And you'll be able to send emails, you'll be able to segment emails, you'll be able to look at your list, you'll be able to understand what's going on. So the, the essence of the answer to this question is, no, you don't need to hire an email marketing specialist. That's what we're trying to avoid with GetResponse. We're trying to make your marketing operations as streamlined as it's, and as simple as possible. And by way of reminder, GetResponse is not just an email marketing platform, okay? The whole goal is here to integrate all of your marketing operations under one umbrella. So we have landing pages, we have website builder, there's webinars, there's so much more that you can do with GetResponse than just email marketing. And the real power to that is that you can have integrations from say a landing page to an email list to a download, and you can be able to integrate all of that with just a few clicks. So to answer to your question, yes, it could take a lot of time, but it's very easy to use. And secondly, you don't need to hire an email marketing specialist because this is so easy to use that you'll be able to be up and running in a matter of minutes. And I'm not exaggerating there because I've used this before. And again, I'm not, I'm not a super intelligent or sophisticated person. I know how to click and that's what I do. Okay. So, something that really yeah. helps um, at the beginning uh, are um, templates. So in GetResponse, you will have templates for, you know, your email uh, emails, templates for landing pages, websites, you know. So this is something that I've seen that actually, you know, really reduces the time needed to to create you know any kind of uh, marketing campaign so mm -hmm. here definitely you know if if you you can you can start yourself you can start using the templates and just you know customizing them a bit but at some point in time uh it, it's a good idea actually to 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 hire an email marketing specialist but it's also a business decision because you know at first you see that okay I've, I've used GetResponse to grow my email list and now I have more customers and they are paying me more. So I have more revenue and I have a solid salary for an email marketing specialist. So actually this is, uh, you know, this is what we recommend. It's like, you can start with GetResponse free and then you just like build your list, grow your business. And at some point um, it's, it's just like, you know, your business decision. Should I hire one email marketing specialist or 10? Good. Good. We have a question here. Will we get any trial period for all the services you offer in the paid plan? Itik, you want to take that one? Sure. So actually, you can uh, try with, with you know when you sign up for the Get Response Free plan, you will also be able to to check you know the um, uh, the paid versions. And then you will be able to actually figure out, okay, do I need this feature or not yet, right? So actually you will be, you still are able to, um, to check what, what's available in the paid plans. Good, good. Um, are, okay, so a question again from Dennis, are there videos in the system? Not entirely clear um, what, what type of videos you're offering. We do have a webinar uh, feature to the software. That's what we're using right now. You're experiencing GetResponse's webinar software. Yes, obviously you can publish videos on your website. You can include email uh, links to videos in your emails. That's something that's completely accessible. Um, I'm going to go over to the, uh, the chat here because we're having questions there as well. Fabian's asking, how can we add tags to a previous created list that has no segmentation. Itik, yeah, you want to sure. Take that one? That's a that's a great question. Thank you yeah. for this one. Because uh, yeah, it it happens that sometimes you have this list uh, and you don't really know what's going on uh, there. So so here is actually where you will find automation really useful. Because for example, you can start like you know planning some some campaigns. Like I don't know it might be first. It would be a good idea to to plan a re-engagement campaign because very often you know you would like to see this is what you daniel mentioned that you, you sometimes you need to uh like you know make sure that only the engaged people are on your list so those who haven't clicked in a while yeah or just like you know in, in a few months probably these are people who are no longer interested so i would go with re-engagement campaign and then you could actually plan, you know, some content to figure out the needs. Um, I've seen like a great campaign that actually, you know, uses call to actions. This is this is what what Daniel described uh, before. 
to actually ask direct questions. For example, you know, if you have like product A and product B, you could, you could, um, okay, this, this might be too uh, vague. Let's say that you have, uh, you sell coffee and tea. So you have an email with two segments. One is about coffee, one is about tea. And then you have this call to action asking people, would you like to buy coffee? And in the second segment, would you like to buy tea? And then based on the click, you can, you can, you know, assign proper tags and you can always, um, you know, start working with the list that, that, uh, is like, you know, without any additional information, but if you give yourself time and if you plan it well, you know, it takes a few weeks and suddenly, you know, more about, about your contacts. Absolutely. Good. Uh, we have this question, is it possible to merge my contact lists with another account within GetResponse? Um, let's see. That's a yes, and I'm trying to derive an answer to that. Itik, you want to take that one? Yeah, sure. You can download um, your email list um, to a file, and then you can upload it to, to another account. So it's it's not a problem. It's not a problem at all. Very good. I have this question. I understand the model, but begin to break down on the connecting process to apply to the landing page. For example, after presenting the offer, how do I connect the thank you page and at the same time capture the email and connect that email to a broadcast or autoresponder? So we're getting into this, some some of the advanced features of email marketing, and that's a great question, Charles Edick. Mm -hmm. Wanna, yeah, we'll Charles, actually, this is great because this is well, you've nailed it. it. It just actually, you've explained everything what GetResponse does. <laughs> because like, um, it's, it's once you actually um, start using GetResponse, you will have everything within this ecosystem. So the thing is that you can create a landing page, even, you know, based on one of the templates that we provide. And then automatically it will, it, it comes with a thank you page. What's more? Uh, there is also integrated web form. So whenever somebody, you can like, you know, publish your landing page in minutes and then you only assign a proper email list. So whenever somebody subscribes, uh, whenever somebody fills out the form on the landing page, they, um, you know, immediately land on your email list and then you can send emails to, you know, to, to, to people on the email list. Right. So, this is this is this is a great one because this is exactly what you will find in GetResponse. But Charles, uh, you're evidently a power user. Thank you very much. I just had to share this one. Thank you. I'm glad the feature is back. I contacted the support about it, so I appreciate it. Love GetResponse. Yes, I'm virtue signaling here by posting this question. But I do want to point this out because this brings up an important point. There's got to be some questions about how do I do X, Y, and Z in a very detailed way. Well, I have good news for you. <laughs> we have an award-winning customer service team. Um, collectively, they speak pretty much any language that you can ever possibly imagine. Um, Itik himself is, is a polyglot. We have a member of our team who speaks six languages, another member of our team. And I'm just talking about my particular team consisting of six or seven people who speak seven languages. I speak um, one. But a little bit of Spanish, a little bit of Swahili, and a little bit of this and that. But the fact is, if what, regardless of the language that you speak and regardless of the question that you have, yes, you can contact our customer service team and they will answer your question 24-7, 365, real people. So definitely, if you have concerns, you have, if you have questions, please ask because we will answer. We have time to answer a few more questions. I'm going to go ahead and show this one from Steve. How does one test their email funnel? This is going to go to you. I have GetResponse sure. and I used my emails. GetResponse would not let me use it to run a test and wouldn't let me remove that email so I could use it for a test again. I sent some frustration. Edek, you want yeah. to approach that one? Sure. I mean, I can, I can feel the frustration as well because I'm also like, you know, a huge A-B testing enthusiast. But uh, I think that this... I think that here we are talking about the conversion funnel. So let me just, um, because the whole idea of a conversion funnel is actually to, you know, create this, let's say, quickest path towards something. So, so the, the idea behind the funnel was that you can easily integrate the features that are um, available in GetResponse and reach a certain goal. This is why originally conversion funnel was not meant for 
A, a B testing because we wanted to use it as a sort of like an um, again like a template for people who want to you know start with get response really fast we wanted to make sure that people who run their businesses and they, then they don't necessarily have time for like you know marketing initiatives um, that they are able to create a landing page you know, create this basic communication and then, for example, like sell their product, right? So this is why you don't have all those A-B testing uh, capacity within the funnel itself. But what you can do is actually you can use automation and you can use all the things that you created and, you know, like switch to automation and then you can actually, you know, plan some some heavy, heavy A-B testing. So, so I... Totally understand your frustration here, and I'm really happy that you actually are right now in this moment of your life where you are actually able to move from conversion funnel to automation and explore. So, so this is what I would suggest here. It's like just go beyond the funnel and create, you know, some 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 automations and yeah, just do the A/B testing within Get Response because like the the funnel was actually meant to, you know quickly set up a certain process and to achieve a goal as quickly as possible. Good, good. And again, Steve, it sounds like you're a power user. You know what's going on. You know how to use the software. And I think you're going to be able to find a way to get past that hurdle. Again, if you have any detailed questions, definitely reach out to the CS team. They're going to help you. We have time for one more question. Rick, thanks for asking this. He's asking about links in an email, the number of links. Say you're talking about a webinar and a product. Does deli is deliverability affected by the number of links? Actually, no. Deliverability has nothing to do with the quantity of links. However, I'm going to, to mention this when it comes to links because links suggests call to action. They want people to obviously click on that link because there's a CTA involved there. My suggestion is to include one and at most two CTAs per email. Uh, for one purpose. You're sending an email for one purpose only. So my advice would be, hey, if you're going to promote a webinar, promote the webinar. If you're going to sell a product, sell a product. Use that two different emails for that. If you do want to put two in one to, to address two very potentially two audiences, that's fine as well. You just want to think, think through the psychology of it. And what I do when I'm conducting an email marketing campaign is I include the link to, or a CTA at the beginning of the email and then at the end of the email. The reason why I do it at the beginning is so users who are in a hurry and don't want to actually spend a lot of time reading the email, just click and get the value. Users who do read the end of the email, they get to the end, it's very easy for them to boom, click. Okay, and I'm done, got the call to action. So that's what I typically do. Thank you so much for attending. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your questions. We wish you the best, good luck, and thanks again. Take care. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.